not space man, but space woman, space scientist Dr Maki Adrian Pocock says this significant moment brings us all one step nearer to space travel, does it really? I, I think so, yes. Yeah. Because this is quite interesting. The International Space Station is sort of a collaboration of lots of different countries. Mm. But now a commercial rocket is taking people to the International Space Station. And um, uh, of all my life, I've wanted to go out there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I'm getting a bit more excited now. It feels as if it could happen. So it's Elon Musk who set up SpaceX. Yes. He's the man behind SpaceX, the whole SpaceX adventure and, and what they're trying to do. And as you say, that is significant because it's not been set up by some government. It's not been run by a sort of a country. Yes. This is his own ambition, his, his business's ambition to bring space travel to the masses. Yes. And it's quite interesting because there's, um, we like to call it Battle of the Billionaires, because there's Musk and Branson and a few others as well. Yeah, Bezos. Who've made, yes, Bezos made a lot of money. I thought, yeah, space, that's the next thing. And so, uh, and so hopefully there won't be a monopoly. It would be sad if just one company was doing it. Mm. But with many companies, um, like with many things, the price will hopefully come down. <laughs> Tom Cruise, there's talk of him uh, making a movie, isn't there? I think they've confirmed that they're in talks to see if he can go up. Be on the space station. We know he likes his stunts. This would be the stunt <laughs> of the century, yeah, never by millennia, ultimate. wouldn't it? And be and do a walk in space. Yes. So um, when you're in space, you're in that sort of microgravity environment. So it feels as if you're weightless. And mm. that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go as a child. I, I'm, I'm not a gymnast on Earth. But in space, you're sort of, you, know, you can sort of you know, twist and turn and do all the things you can't do here uh, when you're limited by um, so much gravity. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, it is the space entertainment enterprise, a company that is said to be co-producing Tom Cruise's plan and space movie with the aim of building a space station module by 2024 that would host films, television, music and sports events. Yes. Um, uh, though expensive, the biggest challenge is getting things off planet Earth, overcoming that force of gravity. And so, for instance, sending one litre of water, a kilogram of stuff into space, costs maybe sort of £10,000. Mm. Uh, pounds, so... <laughs> and there is, and that is the question that's sort of, uh, the, sort of uh, that thrown at the Battle of the Billionaires, that they are trying to explore the idea of commercial space travel <clears throat> at a time when... We are looking to try and be more environmentally sort of concerned about what we are doing. It doesn't feel like a particularly environmentally friendly operation. No, and though um, working in the space industry, that's one of the things we're really trying to take on, mm. um, make space more environmentally friendly. And I, I was um, doing a talk with Tim Peake a little while ago, and he was saying that um, the, uh, um, the cost or the penalty of getting a rocket into space is the equivalent of five tra uh, transatlantic flights. Gosh. So, but things when the rocket's up there, when the uh, probe is up there, it can do so much. It can monitor climate change. It can sort of help refugees in camps to work out where you put the water butts. There's mm. lots of things we can do with space. Uh, most of space isn't looking out there. Most of space uh, that we do is looking actually at Earth. And the technology, of course, we know over the time that even what's been happening has always been used in all sorts of wonderful ways on Earth. So that's the future, yes. you're hoping, and many <laughs> yeah. others too. Uh, what about what's going on now? Because we've seen a lot of activity, including these comets being kind of test blasted. Yes. So um, we know that uh, large comets have hit the Earth in the past. We can mm. find the impact craters and things like that. Something took out the dinosaurs. We're pretty convinced it was an asteroid or a comet. And so one of the things we can do is uh, we keep an eye on what's out there in space, sort of near-Earth objects, we call them. And anything sort of bigger than my fist, we, we can try and keep a track of. Gosh. Uh, but if something... One, the only uh, vulnerable ability we have is if something's coming toward, uh, from the sun, well, not from the sun, but from that direction, it's very hard to spot because the sun's so bright. Yeah. So if something unexpected did turn up, we want to do something about it. Mm. And just like Bruce Willis. <laughs> In Armageddon. <laughs> yes. And so um, uh, this uh, probe, DART, actually sort of impacted uh, an asteroid. Um, and the, the asteroid's got a tail now because of all the dust and debris that came off. So, it's so we look at the pictures. This is the impact moment, isn't it, as, it go, as, as the, the, uh, the rocket sort of blasted into um, the asteroid itself. Yeah. And then I think, have you got... Uh, the picture after impact there, because it's amazing. It looks extraordinary, sort of from afar, what actually happened. Yes, and I think it is. So um, one of the things we want to do is we don't want to uh, necessarily bl um, blow the asteroid up, but it's sort of a deflection. Just nudge mm. it. Yeah, in the, uh, sort of away from sort of the trajectory towards Earth. Shepherd it in a different direction, yeah. CK Garraway. <laughs> well, so there's just... always a shepherd involved somewhere, especially when it involves action. I know, you're around. really keen to get young people involved in uh, space and science, particularly young girls. I know that Charlotte, yes, uh, her little girl, is a huge she fan of She loves your book, especially oh. the bit about wee crystals. I think we've talked about it before, haven't we? The, it's the one bit that caught her attention. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> any way you can get in. Your new one, Am I Made of Stardust? Tell us a little bit about this one, Maggie. Yes. So, over the years, I, uh, over about the past 15 years, I think I've seen sort of about 200,000 uh, mainly school kids talking to them. And at the end of every session, um, they ask me questions. And so I've sort of, dis, um, sort of condensed some of the questions they've asked into the book. Uh, things like, yeah, am I made of stardust? And what's the answer to that one? It is. Um, um, all the elements in our body were made in the heart of a star. The star oh. probably went supernova, sending all that stardust into space. And that became sort of a me, you, the table, everything in here. Fantastic. <laughs> and would it have been uh, the sun, our star, that we got uh, that no. from? So no. it would be a, a previous star, maybe... Um, and some of, our, some of it came from sort of a previous star, maybe many generations of stars. So not just one star, we might be made up of lots of different stardust. Another one of the questions is, does it rain on Jupiter? Ah, yes. So Jupiter is what we call uh, a sort of a gas giant, largest planet in the solar system. And we don't actually know if it's got a rocky core. So if you see Jupiter, you see sort of the bands of sort of gold and orange and, and there's sort of a giant sort of a red spot. Uh, but see, that is turbulent atmosphere that surrounds Jupiter. But if you went down through that atmosphere, what would happen? Uh, because Jupiter is so big, about a thousand times the size of Earth, the temperature would go up, the pressure would go up, and so it wouldn't be very pleasant. <laughs> uh, but some people say that in some of these environments, you could actually get carbon forming diamonds, and so it could rain diamonds oh. on Jupiter. Rain and, and diamonds. Big... <laughs> now that sounds exciting. Is it that, just that, that, exciting. Gives, that gives you a reason to that, go to space, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it well, what well, well, gives Annie a reason to send me to space? I think that would be. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be more to the point. It's fabulous. I mean, it's so, as you say, there's a lot of space stuff going on around yes. at the minute. And the fact that there's a Native American woman on this, uh -huh. uh, this trip as well is hugely important. I think so, very much so. Um, it's of a space uh, in the past where it's dominated very much by sort of white guys. Mm. But I think they're seeing that, yeah, we should be more diverse. Uh, more diverse. And that's one of the reasons I try and encourage people into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths, because we need a, a diverse workforce. So we come up with different ideas and see things from different viewpoints. Mm. If we're going to take on those ethical challenges we need a diverse a team can i just acknowledge as well the spacex suits are definitely the best ones they look don't you think maggie they look really cool they do and i was speaking to someone who went up in a spacex rocket oh really uh, and they said yeah it had that sort of new car smell have a little tree. christmas tree <laughs> yeah. as well. amazing well look it's always lovely to have you come in and, and share some thoughts and enthusiasm with us maggie thank you so much for joining us this love morning. chatting to you thank and you. laura loves you to bits she's our resident space fan Fantastic, aren't you, Laura? Uh, you're also fasc fascinated by all things in space and uh, on clothing, more recently, the fact that we've seen the northern lights in more southern places in the UK. Why is that? Yeah, the northern lights, a treat in the skies. And actually, we've seen them much further south because we've had much stronger storms. So we have this thing called a coronal mass ejection when we have the sun's plasma interacting with the magnetic north and south poles, and that helps to cause the northern lights. And there's actually a good chance of seeing the northern lights overnight tonight across the north of the UK. The stronger the flare, the stronger the storm, and the further south we see it. And so there's one part of it which is beautiful, seeing these stunning displays. But also there's a negative side to it because when we have these strong solar storms, they actually can be very harmful to humans. Not us on Earth, we're protected by the atmosphere, but on board the International Space Station, when they have particularly strong ones with radiation, they have to go to a central area to protect themselves. It can also knock out radio signals and GPS in the worst possible cases. And it's actually really high up the government's list of national security because if we have a really strong one, it can cause all sorts of blackouts and issues down on Earth. But there is a chance of seeing them tonight further north. It's clear and cold, so wrap up. Here's the details.